Hello, I'm Sherry Lee Myers, the host of How to Connect with Angels. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are about to hear advice and inspiration from best-selling authors, teachers, channels, psychologists, ministers, and spiritual anarchists. Our interview guests are very different people that live all over the world, but their belief is the same, that everyone deserves an angel's help. Our film, The Glitch, is all about that too. It's a spiritual fable with great music that we're shooting here in New Orleans later this year. Our website, theglitchmovie.com, has lots of information about it. But right now, let's talk about how to connect with angels. Lorna Byrne was born in Dublin, Ireland, to a poor family. As she writes in her autobiography, From the time I was an infant and opened my eyes, I saw angels. Her infatuation with the non-material led to young Lorna being diagnosed as retarded. The angels told her not to speak to anyone else about what she saw, but that someday Lorna would write a book about them. In 2008, Lorna broke her silence and published her book, Angels in My Hair. The book became an international bestseller, translated into 26 different languages in over 50 countries. Her next two books, Stairways to Heaven and A Message of Hope from the Angels, have also reached bestseller lists. Lorna's message is beautiful and uplifting. Reading her books and talking to her really puts us in awe of the assistance that angels can bring to every bit of our lives if we only remember to ask. I spoke to Lorna just a few days before she was to leave her small village in Ireland to travel to Ethiopia to promote the work of a partnership with Africa. Could you imagine if I were just a little bitty child and I was coming into the world and I said, Lorna, could you explain to me how this works with angels? Well, to to me, it actually works very simple if I was saying that to a child. You know, I would just remind the child that they have a guardian angel and it's right there with them and came from heaven with them before they were even in their mommy's tummy and and was born an angel is not actually born but when the baby is born the angel the guardian angel is right there with them and i would remind a, a child that you know and adults i'm i'm doing it with everyone you know your guardian angel never leaves you for one second and loves you unconditionally you know that love that they have your guardian angel has for you to me is actually overwhelming you know they 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 don't judge you or or anything like that they they love you even when you're i'm sad to say maybe somebody might say oh that person is a bad person well that person's guardian angel still loves them even though it would be doing everything possible to try and get the person not to do something that that is wrong and children love to hear about their guardian angel i was talking the other evening actually to a school in Australia and the kids just kept asking questions mm. and questions and questions you know for a whole a whole hour and they were so interested in knowing that they had a guardian angel and just like every man and woman out there um, and, and that they had a soul and that um, God was real we all have a soul and I was explaining to to the children um, that your soul is that little speck of light of mm-hmm. God. That's the way I describe it. It's, it's actually a part of God and God gives us mm. this part of himself. And it's, it is so tiny, but yet it is so big and it fills every single part of you, you know, and everyone is always amazed with that. And it, it doesn't matter what religion you are or even if you say you don't believe in God or or angels or you don't believe in anything um I just have to smile because I have never in my life and now I'm traveling all around the world I have never seen anyone without a guardian angel can you help us understand how we can communicate or how we do communicate with our guardian angel and how our guardian angel communicates with us um, t- 
to me, again, Good. that is very simple. It is just really acknowledging that you have a guardian angel for yourself. I think people have to do that humanly and don't expect enormous things to happen on the first go that you acknowledge you have a guardian angel. And one of the simplest things is just to ask your mm. guardian angel for a sign, you know, but you have to keep on asking. You know, because your guardian angel has to work with um, lots of other angels out there and and we have to listen. You know, sometimes when a thought comes into your mind, maybe to ring somebody or, or maybe a thought comes in, oh, I'll, I'll buy my friend a bunch of flowers or, or somebody you haven't seen in a long mm-hmm. time or you'll send them a card. Lots of the time we don't notice that, you know, or it never crosses our mind that, you know, someone else's, someone else has um, asked their guardian angel, you know, for that sign. And, and your guardian angel is whispering to you all of the time, will you do it? And giving you these thoughts, but you, most of the time, which is so sad, adults ignore them. You know, we say, we say, oh, no, sure, that would be silly. What would the person think? You know, all those silly thoughts come into an adult's mind. But into a child's mind, it mm. doesn't, that doesn't happen. A child just go and do it. So in a sense, um, if us adults could become more like children in that way, um, I think every adult then would have great communication because I'd watch the angels every day whispering to people over and over again and, and the adult yes. ignoring them, you know, um, so it really is. Can you explain how the archangels work with God and with us and with the other angels? Um, the Archangel Michael and, and Archangel Gabriel right. and some of the other archangels I, I have met, I haven't met them all um, because there is quite a number of them, but yet they're quite limited. Mm. That's the only way I can put that. Um just like Archangel Michael or Archangel Gabriel, they're there for us all. Every Archangel is there for each and every one of us, you know, but they don't stay with us constantly like your guardian angel does, because your guardian angel cannot leave you. So if you pray or you ask a, an Archangel to help yes. you um, in your life, um, they will do so, but they will come and go just like so many other angels just come and go. But archangels work very closely to God and you know many a times they they work hard to to help us to bring peace to our world or to help to join nations together um, but again we don't listen very very well you know Archangel Michael over the years of my whole life has given me which I never realized I have to say um, has you know gave me just so many messages um for for the world yeah. you know for for people to hear and you know just hearing from people all across the world and and they say you know they never knew they had a guardian angel or they never actually really thought of god's angels or they say you know, it it changed their life. It gave them back hope. Um, they're living a happier life, a better life. You know, um, and to me, that is wonderful when someone's Absolutely. life has changed for the better. I suppose the best way to explain to explain it is, um, I pray to God. You know, um, I talk with the angels. I make requests to the angels, but it's God I pray to. I never pray to an angel. And even, you know, lots of people would say they pray to angel, Archangel Michael. Um, but they don't really. They're really only asking him. Archangel Michael doesn't really allow that. Because it's not, it's not allowed. You know, it's even when you ask your own guardian angel yes. even for help in something. You know, yes. and it's kind of a prayer. But it's not a prayer to to the archangel or to your guardian angel they just enhance that prayer that request and it i i can't explain but it's already at god before the thought has even finished in your mind before you've even spoken it um 
prayer is extremely powerful yeah. and I don't think we pray enough or or use the power of prayer um we we seem to do it so 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 little and I know the power of prayer could you know it could move mountains it, it could completely change change the world because one of the visions I was shown was and I know you spoke about yeah. it earlier but I've been shown many where all faiths come together and pray together and the most amazing thing is you know they were praying in 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 their own way that they pray they weren't being told you only can pray in a certain way they were praying their own way and again no one ever prays alone we have the angels of prayer and I have often spoken about them the only way I can describe them when someone is in in prayer is that they're like um a magnificent waterfall except it's not coming down it's going up and it's just full of these angels of prayer again enhancing our our words you know our our love our desperation of of what's happening in 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 our life and that request is is going to god so we never never pray alone and prayer helps you you know to bring your soul forward Lots of people, when they go into prayer at different times of their life, um, and sometimes it can only be for a few seconds, especially, you know, when someone is really feeling stressed or, or something, you know, has, has happened and they're right. crying out in prayer, you know, and it could only take, sometimes only take two seconds and they're in prayer for, for that split moment, but they're actually praying with every single what would you call it mm-hmm. essence of their human mm-hmm. body and their soul their heart mm-hmm. literally everything and they think back years afterwards and they realize God, ah. that prayer was answered but it was the way they prayed in that you know they actually had faith for that second you know it, it can be a mother <laughs> you know crying out from the depths of her soul yes. her heart or her father you know, um, and and we need to do that more in the world today, not just for ourselves yes. and our own families. We we have to pray for, you know, the stranger, for the person. That's we, perfect we don't because that know. was my next question: is how can we best pray for others? I I think the the one thing a person could say to themselves maybe is you know depending on on how much prayer a person would pray is say well once a week or or even you know once a month i will pray for a stranger it's a start it's a start it's a start because i know lots of people you know we it's a human trend within ourselves we 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 kind of only think of ourselves and and our, our own family and those that are close to us we we forget about our neighbor unless something horrific happens you know in that way then we might think then all of that love and sadness you know can touch us and suddenly we feel the grief for a stranger at a time I was um in the car park and you know, I was with my daughter and the angels brought my attention to an elderly woman, you know, sitting in a car up a bit further from, from myself. And, of course, I had to park our own car and get out of it and, and help get, get my grandchild out as well. And I was watching the angels, you know, the guardian angels of everyone that, you know, appeared in the car park, you know, to go to their own car. And nobody was going to help this this lady and I I just I was just saddened you know in that in that way because the guardian angels and even the other angels that were in the car park were giving so many people the opportunity and why to go weren't and they listening and so and why were they afraid I think they were afraid <laughs> you know I I I think they were af- afraid that you know what somebody would think of them. It's baffling, they isn't it? Reject it. You know, it is very, very baffling, you know, and I, I went up and, and helped her and she did hesitate, you know, because he, she herself was afraid. Um, 
but I was watching her guardian angel whispering in her ear, telling her it was okay. And even hearing her own guardian angel, mm. she relaxed that little bit and, you know, said okay, you know, um, because, you know, sometimes the elderly or anyone of any age, you know, sometimes they're afraid somebody's going to mug them or, or hurt them. Certainly. And it's terrible that the world has got to that stage. You know, um, a friend of mine who I was talking to on the phone, she actually just told me um, two weeks ago she slipped and fell. And she said, there was loads of people on the street and no one came oh. and helped me and picked me up, helped to pick oh, me up. My. They just walked past her. You know, so nobody was the good Samaritan. You know, we have to take that risk. We, we can't keep on saying to ourselves and allowing ourselves to You also to mentioned the fact hearted. that in the act of giving, the, there's, the healing is both ways, isn't it? It is you receive. Um, and to me, that is the, the incredible thing. And people are missing out on that. Because when you go and help someone, you know, go and give them a helping hand, it, it fills you with joy and love. It fills you with, 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 with healing within, within yourself. It makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And you could have been feeling down at the time. And suddenly you listened and you decided, I'll help that person. I will do that little thing. And, and you find fulfillment, fulfillment, and you didn't do it looking for that, but you received it. We have to put human beings before wealth. We, we have to, we have to do that. We, we have to, you know, yes. save our planet because it is a beautiful gift to us. We have to save our children. So they're like, all individual things to pray for and it's like you pick one and you pray for that like imagine if even thousands of people gathered once a year to yes. pray for one particular thing yes. you know and we we must remember you know the children of today are the future and then their children are the future and what are we teaching them i i think we are teaching children to mm. be very cold Oh. which is sad. We're not teaching them so much to share, you know, and, and we have to. So we have to pray that children, you know, will grow spiritually. Mm. Prayer is just so, so powerful. It's, it's, it's like a, a cutting sword. It could cut through and all the bad And doesn't prayer things. open up a heaven of possibilities Oh, God, yes, yes. Uh, millions of them. Like, you know, people would say to me, you know, what's the future? Um, and I, I try to explain, you know, God has shown me many futures. Now, good and bad, because we have that free will, we have that choice. We don't have to be doing what we are doing today, you know. And when you think of it that way, mm -hmm. like you're saying, mm -hmm. wow, you know, um, but all of those futures, all those positive futures come together as one. So even though there is many, they all come together as one. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that, you know, but I think Could that is incredible. talk a little about the importance of parenting, of showing love? Because when we talk about our children becoming cold and not um, having love, in their hearts and in their lives. Isn't that our responsibility? It, it is. It's every parent's responsibility, but it's the responsibility as well Good. of those who aren't parents. It's the responsibility of, you know, teachers. It's the responsibility of, to show of your love. government. You know, it's to, to show love, to show, to show that compassion. Um, it, it is so sad to to see the angels have shown me just so many times, no matter what part of the world I'm in, you know, children becoming cold hearted and, and because they are not being shown love um, because they've been hurt so much that they have locked their love away and they're just, 
it's like, you know, no way am I going to show love to anyone. I'm going to strike out, you know, and that's so, that's so sad with what's happening in the world today. Um, all those children that are refugees or in war zone places or are hungry, thirsty and cold, they're not being shown love and they're locking their love away and, and becoming more, in a sense, cold hearted. And even, you know, I've seen it even in children here in my own country, in Ireland, you know, within families. And I find that so sad why it comes down a lot to, to parents, even if a, a young parent, you know, says to themselves, you know, I have been cold hearted. I, I have found, you know, life really hurtful and I've locked away a lot of my love, but I'm going to do my best not to allow my child to lock away that love and that mother start to show their their child so we really have to take responsibility don't you know, we 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 do Ev- everyone does as i i just say you know you don't even have to be a parent you know a stranger can show an aunt and uncle you know can show a child love they need so so many children don't even see parents give themselves mm give each other a hug you know or give each other a kiss or or say something loving you know or being kind to an animal you know a lot a lot of the time children are missing out out on that parents are are just so busy they feel you know they have to be out there working 24 hours a day to give the child the material things but the child really needs the love it needs to roll in the grass with dad, mom, with, mm. with cousins and, you know, do all those things, you know, to connect back spiritually, to be allowed to open up. Because when children are born, you know, mm. they see their guardian angel. They hear their guardian angel as clear as anything. But it's, it's usually, again, they're three years of age. A lot of that is gone. It's just completely mm. closed off. I would love for you to explain a little more about the Blue Box creative therapy that you support. Please, would you please? Oh, yes. Um, I, I will. I will indeed. Um, it was about six months ago I started up the Lorna Burns Children. And one of the charities I support is called the Blue Box. And it's in Limerick. And it is for children that have been traumatized you know and you would say how could that happen in Ireland but the sad thing is in Limerick in one section of Limerick um, there is a lot of families that are involved Uh let's say in criminal things and a lot of these children they are so beautiful the kids are really so good they're just not given a chance and one day I went to the school and um, Father John had asked me, would I go and talk about, to the children and let oh. them know they have a guardian angel? Because he said, I don't think they believe me at all. They just look and laugh at me. You know? So bring in the big guns. So, She's got so, a book. Yeah. <laughs> so there was at, at least 40 children in this class. I think it was more than one class. And there was a few teachers And I just started to talk about the guardian angel and letting them know that they have a guardian angel. And it never leaves them for a second. And I said, you can tell your guardian angel any secret. You can talk to it, you know, and share like Mm -hmm. like you would your best friend. Mm -hmm. And I said, you must remember as well, you can tell your teacher as well, you know, your secret and, and your parents because you have to be careful there. And it was, the room just went silent, just for, you know, probably 30 seconds. And the next minute, hands went up, and the kiddies got just so excited, jumping in their seats. And this little boy, I said to him, okay, you you say what, what you want. And he said, can I really share with my guardian angel my secrets? And I said, yes, of course you can. Your guardian angel hears every word you say. And can I share right now my secret with you as well and my guardian angel? And I said, yes. It was like as if that little boy Mm. forgot he was in the classroom. And I know his guardian angel must have done that. And the teachers were there. Well, the story he told was 
that for the last two weeks he was coming into school and mm-hmm. he didn't have any lunch. So he would get lunch off, a little bit off the mm-hmm. other children in school. And he said his dad is in prison. And his, his granny is meant to, you know, call up to the yes. house. I'm skipping loads of it, you know, when mommy is not around. And he hasn't seen his oh mommy God. seemingly for weeks. And it was sad because she was a drug addict, I found out afterwards. So that that was sad. And he, he, this little child described climbing up onto the cabinets every day after school and opening each press over and over again, oh. just looking for a crust of bread. All as he had to drink because his granny never oh. came because she was sick. And he had to keep the curtains closed. And he was telling it in the way a child mm-hmm. would, you know. And when he would go into the house, he was not allowed to answer the door. Well, that wasn't yes. the only story we heard. And Blue Box is helping children like that. Blue Box just does so many wonderful things for the children, but they can only yes. look after so many, you know. And they're they're trying to help the parents too when they find a child, you know. Um, they're trying to help the parents to yes. be a better parent. Yeah, you know. Um, and just seeing some of these these children, you know, when I went to their a little center, they have. Um, they they introduced me to a, a little boy and girl, and and the the lady there said, Lorna, these kids didn't know how to play with toys when they came first, mm-hmm. and I said, but they're seven years of age, and she said, yes, but they never had a toy. Wow, you know, and we we have to help children and we have to show them love, and these children are being showed love, and they're as bright as oh. buttons. You know, like they're, you know, mm. just to see them smile and laugh and, and being happy there just was was just so wonderful. Then let's talk about the um, partnership with Africa because you're going to Ethiopia. You you have a documentary that's going to be filming the work that you're doing there. Please, let's hear about it. Well, I'm I'm heading off to to Africa, to Ethiopia, to that part of Africa, and I think that part is at the top. And then we're working our way down, and we're flying out here on oh. Sunday, the twenty first. Um, I have never been to Africa before, and I I don't know what way our documentary will turn out. I am just praying and depending on God and the angels that that it will sure. turn out brilliant, that it will be attractive for people to watch and that it will open their hearts and and maybe Certainly. give to the foundation. You know, as I as I say to people, yes. even if you give one penny, that that one penny or that one one dollar or one euro or one pound or if it's fifty cent, you know, that could be what changes a life. Will I tell you a story? Absolutely. Do you have please. time? Okay. I am the the priest that has organized um a, in partnership with Africa, APA, um he's Father Own and um he told me that only recently in Africa he met this woman. He said she's in her sixties, roughly he wasn't, he wasn't quite sure. And she told him this story that he thought was just amazing. And it's actually about a a boy of 12 or 13, he was at the time. And he didn't have his parents. So every day he would do his best begging and any work he could get so he could feed himself. But this day he wasn't very successful. So he decided he would go up to the houses um, and take a chance on knocking on on somebody's door and asking, you know, could he have a glass of milk? So he must have wandered into a place that was pretty wealthy in that that way. Um, But when he got up to the door, seemingly, um, the lady said, he got afraid and he decided he would only ask for a glass of water. 
but he did knock on the door. And when the lady opened the door, he just said to her, could I have a glass of water, please? And the lady said to him, oh. you look hungry. And she went back into the house and she brought oh. him out a glass of milk. Because that's what he wanted was a glass of milk. So she, she listened, listened to her, to her angel. angel. She listened to her angel <laughs> and she yes. had the grace. Exactly. Was, what is it? The healing grace. The grace of healing. The grace of healing yes. for herself yes. and for yes. him. And it's the it's the intention and the action, isn't it? It's it's taking that step, it's whether just, it's a penny, it is, a yeah. pound, or a million dollars, it's just important to take the step, isn't it? But, but oh, oh, there's more. The oh my gosh. Story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is Sorry. more. For some reason, because she gave him that glass of milk, this little boy survived. And some, and in some way, from that moment on, um, we don't know how it happened, but maybe partnership with, you know, with AIDS Africa, you know, because they help so many children. But somehow this little boy ended up getting educated. And this lady was in hospital. 60 years of age she had cancer and her surgeon comes to her bed and he tells her what kind of cancer he, she has and you know that she'd have to have surgery and it was really the best thing for her and um, she agreed and her family were praying and all that she would you know recover and get well and the surgeon did the, the surgery and afterwards he, he came back to her bed when she had recovered a bit. And he said to her, you know, um, we got it all. Your cancer is gone. You're going to just have two, three treatments now. And I know you'll be fine. And, on, and she had her treatments afterwards. And on the day she was leaving. Now, I don't know whether they do it this way in Africa, but this is the way the woman said it was done. She was handed the bill by the surgeon and she thanked them and she said she held it to her chest and she was saying, oh, please, God, don't let the bill be mm -hmm. too high, you know, mm -hmm. too expensive, you know, but yet she was thanking God, you know, for her cancer being gone and so was her family. And when she opened the bill, what do you think was written on it? <laughs> No charge for a glass of milk. Wow. Do you see? You know, <laughs> that one euro, that glass of milk, you do mm. not know what child's life you save or, or, or what happens to them. You know, but just to think of him, of oh, it, him just, becoming a surgeon, oh. all because... Of that particular oh, day, I promised I wouldn't. Cr I wouldn't cry when I was on. The, I think <laughs> was in the interview. That is so beautiful. Well, I think. Oh, I think that is oh. just incredible. You know, where she she said he recognized her. She never recognized the oh. letter, the bill, oh. and saw <laughs> that for a glass of milk, no charge. Wow! Wow! You know. That, that, that is incredible. So that's one thing the angels are always reminding us. Mm -hmm. You know, be the good mm -hmm. Samaritan. You know, help. You know, in whatever little way you can. To hear more enlightening and inspiring episodes of How to Connect with Angels, please visit our website, www.theglitchmovie.com forward slash how to connect with angels. Thank you.